You can do it better. You can do it better. Unto Jesus. You can do it better unto Jesus. That clap can be louder. That clap can be stronger. Amen. I want to turn to somebody and tell the person, in this life, may you never be poor. Tell the person, in this life, may you be a faithful steward of everything God has entrusted into your hands. In this life, every talent God has given you, every gift God has given you, may you be a faithful steward of it. May God never say that you abused or misused or didn't use the talent he gave you in Jesus name can we can we pray can we pray this evening father we thank you tonight we give you praise and we give you glory we thank you for this opportunity to be in your presence father as we have come into your house teach us your word father our word says that the entrance of your word it brings light it brings understanding to the simple Father, open your word to us tonight. Father, our word says that your word is a lamp unto my feet and a lamp light unto my path. Father, light every path in this house tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, anybody walking in darkness, Father, may light shine for them in Jesus' name. Father, anybody walking in darkness of poverty, may the light, Father, of kingdom prosperity shine for them in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you praise, we give you glory tonight. Anoint my lips of clay. May I speak as you want me to speak, oh God. May I speak with utterance and unction tonight. In Jesus' name we've prayed. And we'll all say a big amen. amen. Ah, ah, ah. Your amen can be louder tonight. You can give Jesus your loudest amen tonight. Amen, amen. You want to shake two, three people and you want to take your seat. You want to shake two, three people. You want to take your seat. As I was preparing the sermon, I thought, God, this is something I should have preached on Sunday, but, <laughs> but sorry for those who cannot be here. I cannot preach it again on Sunday. So uh, it's a plus to you. Amen. And may this word catapult you to your divine destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, that amen can be louder tonight. Amen. So turn to someone and tell the person, listen carefully tonight. Turn to another person and tell the person, listen carefully tonight. I'm going to be talking about some very, very interesting things. You know, when it comes to prosperity and, and stewardship and wealth and success, there's a spiritual aspect and there's a physical aspect. So if you go online on YouTube, just type motivational speakers on success, you get a lot of them. But I'm talking about the spiritual aspect, amen. So you can get, go and get all the other, other ones you need, but I'm talking about the spiritual the spiritual part. Amen. And I'm praying that by the time I finish, we should be able to have some time to pray. Because some things must happen for you in the mighty name of Jesus. I've been, for the past two, three weeks, I've been fasting. I used to pick days when I'll fast, but in the, this week, as the week was about to begin, I just thought, God, let me just fast. Not for me, but for you. Amen. And my prayer was that, God, if you're clapping, you can do it better. And my prayer has been this week, God, let every male and female even the chairs in Timothy generation, may they prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. In your lifetime, when it comes to prosperity, may you not be lacking. Amen. Amen. And as I was praying and fasting, one of the things God said was that some of you, the kind of monies that will go through your hands, you have not experienced it before. Amen. The one with the loudest amen, may that be your portion. <laughs> and as I was praying, God was also told me that some of you, people who didn't know you, they'll hold your hand and bring you into certain positions. Amen. And may that spirit of favor be your portion in Jesus' name. God also said that some of you, you enter into places, they didn't know you, but they'll begin to favor you and catapult you. May that be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, I think chapter 55, if I'm not mistaken, but it's in the book of Isaiah, God was talking to the children of Israel. God was telling them that you will call a nation, and nations who didn't know you will respond. Amen. And so many nations who didn't know you respond. Amen. What that means is that you may call, I may call Nana because I know someone, or I, I know Nana, and somebody who didn't know me, Bright, your name, young man, Emmanuel, Emmanuel and Polue, and um, 
uh, Roma, uh, Adante, Emmanuel, Adante, <laughs> they'll respond, amen, even though they didn't know me, amen, when I see him, I always get confused, is it Roma or Emmanuel, you know, so those who don't know, Roma is not his name, his name is Emmanuel, <laughs> Uh, some of you is a shock. Say what a shock. <laughs> uh, Roma was, it's not on his birth certificate. You people have given him the Roma. He's called Emmanuel. Emmanuel Adante, that's his name. Amen. But tonight I'm talking about the fundamental laws of success. Fundamental laws of success. Fundamental laws of success. Amen. So there is a place for you on top if you are interested. And the top is no automatic. automatic. The top is a choice you make. So say there is a place for me at the top. You know, sometimes I ask you to repeat, not because I don't have anything to say, but sometimes when you repeat certain things, your spirit hears it, your heart hears it, your soul hears it, and your body begins to work towards it. Amen. So I ask you to repeat so that in your mind, your spirit accepts that you, you cannot settle for anything less. You must settle for something great. Amen. So you want to say there is a place for me at the top. The top is a choice I have to make. And I will definitely get there. Amen. So there's a place for you at the top. And it comes at a cost. It comes at a cost. So my question tonight, are you ready to pay the price to get to the top? And it's my prayer that everybody will pay the price. The, the price to get to the top is, is not easy. But may you be able to pay the price to get there in the mighty name of Jesus. As a matter of fact, there are more people down here than they are at the top. There are more people. There's a lot of traffic down here than there are at the top. Uh, at the top, there, there's no traffic. Once you fly, if, you are, if you've ever flown an airplane before, you realize that you'll be flying and you are the only person. You are flying miles and there's nobody. You cannot walk from here to the junction and not meet another person. There's a lot of traffic down here. Amen. Even in the plane, there's traffic somewhere and there's traffic. And the few times I've flown, I've always been in economic class. Economic class, the seats... It's like trotro, it's like trotro, where you sit there for six hours, you are, sit, you are squeezed in a place, somebody's sleeping on you. If God, God help you if you find somebody who is fat, and the person is just, I remember one time I sat with this man who was fat, and he was, because, before the flight, he, we were leaving Ghana, so he had sweated and he was smelling. The whole six hour flight was, was a smelly one for me, amen. And he would be yawning and he would just be blowing fuse into my face. But they pack so many people into the economy class. And I thought, oh, at least I'm flying, at least. Until one day, one Italian man bought me a business class ticket. And that's when I noticed that, hey! Ah, uh, <laughs> there's a difference and there's a difference. Someone said that when people enter a plane, there are two ways you can get to your destination. Either you get to your destination tired or you get to your destination well rested. And anytime I flew in economy class, I'll always get to my destination very tired. But the day I flew business class, you, your seat is here. Then the next person is sitting somewhere here. So you only you have this whole seat. And your seat, can you can actually make it into a bed. And most of the time when I flew economy class, I'll be there. And the whole six hours, sometimes I will not sleep. The day I sat in business class, I said, this one, I will sleep. I slept for six hours. I'll be there, don't wake me up. Would you want to eat? I said, no, don't worry. This one, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it for a lifetime, amen. What am I trying to say? There's a lot of traffic down here than there is at the top. May God help you to get to the top in the mighty name of Jesus. So the first law I'm talking about is the law of divine guidance. The law of divine guidance. The law of divine guidance. And if there is anything you ever ask from God, it will be God direct me into my path in life. Direct me into your place of abundance and of success. I had a story of, of a man who had finished school for so many years and didn't have anything to do. He was, he was looking for something to do. He was, and he, he decided to go on a fast. So he went on a 21 day fast. Led by God. I'm not saying go on a 21 day fast. <laughs> you don't want to know what you're on. But he went on a 21 day fast. A Nigerian man. And as he was fasting, God said, go and buy granites and fry it in honey, and sell it. So he said, God, what kind of dream? I'm a graduate, I'm a university graduate. What kind of dream is this? Granite, I'm a God. So he went and bought the granite, and so, and fried it in honey. And apparently in Nigeria, he was the first person to have done that. Probably outside, they had done it, but he was the first person to have done, had a nice way of doing it, doing it with honey. Once at the time, the story was being told, this guy had become a millionaire, amen, because he followed divine guidance. 
May you be able to follow divine guidance in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And some of you at the point, God will tell you that what you are doing, I want you to stop and do this. May you be able to hear God's distinct voice and be able to follow it in the mighty name of Jesus. May that be your portion in Jesus' name. But divine guidance, divine guidance. So Abraham was somewhere. God said, Abraham, leave this land and go to a land that I will show you. And there I will make you great. Genesis chapter 12 verse 1. Genesis chapter 12 verse 1. Now the Lord had said to Abraham, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. So you can imagine Abraham living in his father's house, living in his country. God says, I'll leave this country and go to a land that I'll show you. Amen. And that is the greatest decision that Abraham has ever made. Amen. Because through him, Israel has come to be. Amen. And it, I was reading a, a little bit about Israel. And the economy of Israel is greater than the whole Middle East put together. If you can imagine the countries in the Middle East put together. The whole economy of, of Israel is bigger than, than the whole Middle East put together. So this decision that Abraham made to follow divine guidance made a difference in his life. May you be able to hear God. Anytime I'm praying, I'm like, God, help me to know when you want me to stop, when you want me to go. Help me to know when you want me to go to the left and when you want me to go to the right. Because that is very, very important. Amen. And may that be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Even in the area of marriage, God, help me to know when you want me to stop. Help me to know when you want me to go. <laughs> very, very important. Sometimes God, you're in a relationship, God is telling that this relationship, it is not good. But you feel like, God, I have met the prettiest lady in the world. God, I cannot stop. And you're heading into distraction. But may you be able to hear God in Jesus' name. And God speak to you, speaks to you. May, yesterday, one young man, he's not here so I can share a story, came to my office and he cried. I, I, I almost wept with him. And he, had, he has dated a lady since 2005. <laughs> <laughs> since 2005 how many years is that 40 years eh? <laughs> more than what more than three PhDs eh? you, would have, uh, you would have had three PhDs in that time <laughs> oh they have planned everything marriage next year marriage is coming on then the lady says no lie lie I'm not I almost told him that this is God speaking <laughs> So the man was, he was crying, so I had some tissues on my back. I, I realized that people cry a lot in my office, so I took some tissues. I said, two tissues, I took it. Hey, Pastor, thank you, Pastor, thank you. Pastor. <laughs> May God help you to know when to, when to stop, when to stop. <laughs> but uh, tissue, eh? So if you, if you want to cry, I have a lot of tissue in my office. I have, I have boxes of tissue. <laughs> boxes of tissue. Uh, you, you want one? Hey, you want to cry? So I told him that, let us pray. Let's, if it's God's choice, uh, we, 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 the lady will come back. If not, <laughs> uh, but, but may God guide you when you are making your choice and decision in Jesus' name. But Abraham heard from God. The children of Israel were led by God. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 12. He says, so the Lord alone led him. So he was talking about Israel, but he used him because Israel is actually the name of a person which actually became a nation. So in Ghana, you have Osei, then you have Osei Krum. So Osei was a human being, and then, the, you know, so Israel, <laughs> so he's talking about Israel. So he says, the Lord alone led him, and there was no foreign God with him. The Lord alone, may God alone lead you in this life in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, the Lord alone. No, may no man or woman lead you. May only God, may, not even your boss. Not, let God alone lead you. Let God alone lead you. Hmm. Very, very important. Let God alone. And if you are able to come to the point where God is leading you, where God will take you to, you'll be surprised. Because God will never take you to a place where he will disappoint you. And the Bible says in the book of Isaiah 48 verse 17, this, that says the Lord your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I'm the Lord your God who teaches you to profit. Who leads you by the way you should go? Who leads you by... So in stewardship, in success, in prosperity, God leads you in the way you should go. May you be able to become sensitive to the voice of God. The voice of God. To know when 
God, this is time to pause. God, this is time to go. God, where do I... I remember I was, I was looking for a job and I, I spoke to a, a doctor who had worked in a place where I wanted to work. Hey, I didn't know if he didn't want me to work there or... But the kind of, the kind of description the guy gave me before he even... I said, I want to work in a place. He said, sit down, let me tell you something. For 30 minutes, was telling me how bad where I wanted to work was like. How bad the woman I was going to meet is like. How bad the doctors there are like. For, for 30 minutes. I said, but I still want to apply. So I went. I said, God, this place that somebody has run away from. And I'm running to it. I just felt like, you go. You go. I applied and I got a job. And I went and I'm like, ah, this same place that they, they hated him. They are loving me in that same place. Amen. Why? Because when God leads you, he leads you into a good place. If you are clapping, you can, you can do better. So in this life, may God lead you. In 2019, may God lead you. In 2019, may God lead you to sow in places where you reap your rewards. May God lead you to take your application to, to, to pl- jobs or companies where you will get employment. In 2019, may God lead you to the right lady that will help you and catapult you to your divine destiny. May God lead you to the right guy, the right gentleman. Amen. I'm speaking to some people tonight. <laughs> I'm looking at me. Pastor, are you talking to me? Let God talk to you. Amen. He says, who leads you by the way you should go? Who leads you by the way? So, one, God led Abraham. Two, David sought divine guidance before going to war. If you read, David fought 66 battles and didn't lose even one. Why? You would see, he always sought God. Places where he had even fought. And so, he, if, if you fought and won today, tomorrow, if the same people were coming again, he would, he would go back and ask God, God, should I go and fight them? Uh, this week, I was hearing about one of our, one of our boxers. Is it Isaac Dogbe or something? So he fought the first fight and he, by a Mexican and they beat him. Then he went to a rematch. And they beat him again in the second rematch. And his father is saying he should stop boxing and go, and go back to school. Go and study. Amen. But if David had fought that fight and won, in the second one, he asked God, God, this fight that I won, I know his weakness. Should I go in again? He will ask God. He will ask God about it. <laughs> May God lead you. May God lead you. <laughs> May God lead you. <laughs> Amen. Because without divine guidance, your toil is in futility. Without divine guidance, your toil is in futility. Your toil is in futility. So in the secular world, hard work is, is important. You hear when you listen to all the motivational speakers, they talk about hard work. Hard work is important. I'm a, I'm a hard worker. But when it comes to your Christian faith, God must lead you. Even though you are working hard, work hard, but ask God to lead you into your divine destiny. Amen. So the Bible says that Peter was fishing. And the Bible says that they had toiled all night and they didn't catch anything. They were fishing in the water but they had been roaming, combing. They would paddle here, cast the net, maybe one or two fish. Then they would say, let's go here. Maybe they are fishermen. They can tell. They look at the way the waves are going. They say, okay, maybe they understand paddiology and they understand semiology. And uh, Many of you have heard Bishop's story. Eh? So, they would, okay, let's paddle a bit. They paddle, then they cast the net. Ah, all night. The fishes should be... It's night, so they should be sleeping by now. We are casting them, but we are not catching anything. And no paddle. I first say, maybe let's try here. We try. It's all night. They didn't get anything. And Jesus comes and says, can I have your boat? Jesus uses his boat. And when he's done, Jesus says, Peter, you in the middle of the water there, you go there. Eh? I, I sense I'm God. I sense that there's fish in there. Uh, apparently, when they saw, the, anytime they saw the Peter's boat, they would all shift to one side. But Jesus said, you, when you go there, they won't see your boat. It's, blind, it's a blind spot. When you go there, you'll be able to catch. The Bible says that Peter goes in there. He says, Master, we have told all night. We are fishermen. We are, we are, uh, it's like you meet a doctor. You go and you sit in front of your doctor. Your doctor is telling you that based on the labs, maybe you have anemia or you have, you know, ulcer. Then you tell the doctor, doctor, this one cannot be true. You look at the lab. You look at, look at it. I'm teaching you. Doctor, you've gone to school, but I'm teaching you. You know. And that's how it sounded like between Jesus and, between Jesus and Peter. He says, ah, Jesus, we are the fishermen. We have been doing this for years. You, are, you, you come, you are a preacher, you come and tell us how to, you know. So Jesus said, you just try. Peter goes and he tries it once. And the Bible says that the fish that was coming 
the fishes that were coming in were, were, were breaking the net. He called his friends. They also came and they, they are both almost sunk because there was an abundance of fish. Why? When you, when you hear and you listen to God, God leads you to a place where you can get abundance. Amen. And may God lead you to a place where you can get abundance in the mighty name of Jesus. I said, may God lead you to a place where you can get abundance in Jesus' name. So tonight you may be here. You may be, you may be a student. You may be here. You may be... Uh, a dressmaker, you may be a seamstress or a designer. Now we don't use those terms again. You may be a seamstress, you may be a bead maker. Is there any other modified name for them? Maybe a, a hair, you may be a hairstylist. They are not hairdressers, they are hairstylists. You may be a makeup artist. Uh huh. You may be a what? You, uh -huh. you may be a beautician. You are here, you may be an MC. You are here. What else can you be? You are here, you may be selling one thing or the other. Amen. But God can direct you in a way that you can make profit. And may God direct you in a way to make profit in the mighty name of Jesus. I know, I know a young man from the French church. He came here, he studied, he did his degree in Ghana. Whilst he was doing his degree, he said he felt that God wanted him to sell suits. So the guy who, who has built that, that restaurant there, he has restaurants, he has two, he has two shops. You know, he's a French, he's not a Ghanaian, he's a French. What he did was that, I was, I was in my... I work one day when he called me, he says, I want, can you get me some people too? So I, I asked my friends, these are suits, you want some? So my, three of my friends said, we want suits. So he brought you, came quickly, came and distributed the suits and took his money, free, and, and, and took his profit and went away. Amen. Why? He's been, he's been able to put, and he put that thing there all by himself. The last time I asked him, it cost me about 60,000 Ghana cities. This, all he did, that's to sell suits. Sell suits, he comes to you, sells the suits to you. You know, and it cost him that. Some of you, you may do your professional job and not make that kind of money. You know, but what am I trying to say? When God leads you, you will definitely make it. And may God lead you wherever you are in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, I said, may God lead you wherever you are in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So there were fishes in the sea waiting for Peter's net, but he needed divine guidance. The divine guidance. The divine guidance. Amen. The second thing I want to talk about is that there is a land appointed for your success. Some of the things I'm telling you, you write, write them down. There's a land appointed for your success. There's a land appointed for your success. So your blessings are geographically located. Your blessings are geographically located. Your blessings are geographically located. So it means that there is a land appointed for your success. <laughs> There's a land appointed for your success. So why am I saying this? There is always a place that God wants you to be per time. And you, you want to make sure that you are there or you are in the place where God wants you to be per time. So if God wants to bless you in Tamale per time, you want to be there in Tamale at the time that God wants you to be. Amen. So if you take Bishop Ajina, sorry. There were people who were in Accra when Bishop was in Tamale, but he was making it. He was coming from Tamale and traveling abroad when they were still in Accra and not making it. So when you, have, when you find yourself in a place where God wants you to be, you make it. Amen. So if you find yourself in a company where God wants you to be, you find yourself even with a man or woman where God wants you to be, you make it. Amen. May you find yourself in the right place in the mighty name of Jesus. But well, there are people that have looked at the economy in Ghana and said this economy is very hard. Let me go to US or let me go to UK or let me go to Europe. And they are struggling. And there are people in Ghana who are eating. There are people who are outside. And we have students who are outside. They have left and they are abroad. When they talk, their friends feel like they are enjoying. But even one meal a day, they are finding difficult to enjoy. Amen. Why? Because probably they were in a place where God didn't want them to go. Amen. So don't, don't make up your mind that when I... God, there be, there be when I get to US... I will succeed. Oh God, when I get to the UK, I will succeed. No, 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 no. Make sure you are where God wants you to be. Amen. But, but my, a very close friend of mine, doctor friend of mine, we did our house job together, did our rotations together, we were always found together, went for lunch together every day. You know. So he was applying to go to the UK. He says, Let, let's, let's write our plab. The, the British exam is called plab. Let's write our plab and go. But as I thought about it, I'm like, okay, when you go, the money that, when you bring your small pounds, it will make, if I even bring 100 pounds, I give you 100 pounds, uh, I'll change your life. <laughs> I'll change your life. <laughs> but as I prayed about it, I felt, you know, there's no, God doesn't want me to be in the UK. Maybe later on, God will want me today. But now, he doesn't want me to be in the UK at this time. At this time. 
So I told my friend, you write and go. So he's written and he's gone. But I told God, God, if this is where you want me to be, a few years from now, when my friend comes back, may he notice that leaving me didn't make me worse off. <laughs> that I was, I was the same, even though he was in Europe and earning his pounds. Amen. Why, when you find yourself in the place where God wants you to be, he makes you succeed. And may you find yourself in that place in the mighty name of Jesus. So don't leave to another country because of struggles. Leave because God said leave. So when you decide you want to leave, leave because God said leave. Don't leave because you think it's, you are struggling. Because you may go and realize that the situation there, you go there and people who have degrees are cleaning toilets and they are washing bowls. Hydrothermal engineer. Hydrothermal, they wash bowls. <laughs> Somebody went and came back. He had been washing bowls this whole time. He came back and his friends asked him, what have you been doing in the US? You see me, you've put on weight, you're looking like, he said, I'm a hydrothermal engineer. Wow, he uses warm water to wash plates and, and bowls. <laughs> Just give it air. So you see people, they have degrees and they are washing bowls, they are washing toilets, and they are, at the end of the day, they, they make money, but that's a degrading job. Don't leave and go and do something that is below, below what, what you have gone to school for. Amen. So leave because God wants you to leave. So the Bible says that Isaac, and if you read the, if you read the scripture, you realize that Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, had left Genesis chapter 12 from the verse 10. Abraham had left to Egypt. And if you read, Abraham, when God asked Abraham to leave in Genesis 12, God told him to go. But when Abraham was going to Egypt, he didn't ask God if he should go to Egypt or not. So he went to Egypt, and in Egypt, he had to lie. He lied to Pharaoh that the woman who was working with him, the beautiful woman, was his sister. If you read that story, as I was reading and preparing, I realized that that was an interesting story. But I said that when they got in there, the Egyptians, the whole nation of Egypt, saw that the woman was beautiful. Then they went and told Pharaoh. Then the princess of Pharaoh came and told Pharaoh, Pharaoh, this woman, you must have her. So Pharaoh ordered and sent her and put her in her hand. But the Bible says that when she got there, a curse came onto the family of, a plague came onto the family of Pharaoh. And he noticed that this woman must be somebody's wife. And he gave Sarah back to Abraham. And the Bible says in the verse 20, he sacked Abraham out of of Egypt. He was sacked. So in our day, he will be deported. So he was in the UK, they deported him back to Ghana <laughs> because he didn't hear God's voice. But may you hear God's voice per time in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says, you are clapping, you can do it better. So the Bible says that Isaac also finds himself in the same situation. He might have heard his father's story, his father telling him the story. Then there's a family in the land, he wants to go to Egypt for food. And if you look at scripture, you realize that there was something peculiar about Egypt. Even in Joseph's time, there was food in Egypt and there was no food. There was, there was famine everywhere. Isaac decides to go to Egypt, but this time he asks God. He does something different. He asked, because if he had also gone to Egypt, he would, have, he would have faced the same thing Abraham went through. He says, God, should I go? God says, no, remain in this land of famine, and in this land I will bless you, and you reap a hundredfold return. The Bible says that he plants and reaps a hundredfold return, whatever he has sown. In this land that we say the economy is hard, may God cause you to blossom in the mighty name of Jesus. In this land... That they say things are difficult. May God cause you to blossom. May God cause you to increase. May God cause you to be blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. May that be your portion in Jesus' name. As in this land, people are making it. People are making it. Last year, my friend got a job. Paying his, 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 um, his majority income is over 12,000 Ghana cities. His net income is about 10,000 Ghana. Why? In Ghana. And this is the same amount he was earning in France. And when he was in France... He lived in France for about four years. In France, he was getting paid 2,000 2, euros a month. Sent some home. But he was living in a hostel. He was living in a student hostel. He couldn't even afford an apartment. He was living in a student hostel. He was walking barefoot. He was walking, you know, they, they use a lot of trains and bicycles. He had a bicycle, you know. He would enjoy, he wear suit, he wear coat and take a picture. And I've seen some people who are abroad, they take pictures. Some, I've seen some, some young people from the YouTube abroad, they are taking pictures. Charlie, don't look at those pictures and be deceived. <laughs> don't look at those pictures and be, de- and be deceived. <laughs> you may be wearing those things, but the cold and the hunger that you are going through, only God knows. But he was abroad. You see him in his, what, in his Facebook, Charlie, standing by his bicycle and taking, wearing, wearing, and you're like, God, when I would also wear this cap, I would also wear the gloves. No, don't be deceived by those things. Then he comes to Ghana. He says he felt, he felt that God, I must come to Ghana. People are making. He comes to Ghana, and what he's earning 
in France. He's earning the same thing in Ghana. And now he has bought a car. In four years in France, he couldn't buy a car. In a few months in Ghana, he has bought a car. He has rented a house. Amen. Why? When you hear God, God brings you to the place where you can be blessed. That's all I'm saying tonight. May you be able to hear God in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Because your story will be different. Your story will be different when you hear God. Your story will be different. May you be able to hear God in the mighty name of Jesus. What are the benefits of divine guidance? What are the benefits of being guided? What are the benefits of being guided? It looks like I can, I can only do one today and then we would go ahead and pray. I can only do one today and we'll go ahead and pray. So benefits of divine guidance. One, when you are guided by God, he is responsible for going ahead to make the crooked path straight. He's responsible for going ahead to make the crooked path straight. He's responsible for going ahead to make the crooked path straight. When you are, when you are guided by God, I married because I was guided by God. So when I face you, I say, God, this one, you asked me to marry this woman. God, you must make the path straight. How <laughs> you went in by yourself? So you can't even pray this. When you pray, God will not even hear this prayer. <laughs> so they slap you. They are beating you. They are, oh, they are insulting you. You can't even pray this. You didn't go in by God. But you go in by God. Is, so Isaiah 45, verse 1 and 2. That says the Lord to his anointed. To Cyrus, whose right hand I have held, to subdue nations before him and lose the armor of kings, to open before him the double doors so that the gates will not be shut. May God open before you double doors so that your gates will not be shut in Jesus' name. He says, I will go before you, that is Cyrus, and make the crooked path. The, the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron. May God break every gate of bronze and every bar of iron before you in the mighty name of Jesus. So let me give you a little story or history about this, this, this scripture. Cyrus was an unbeliever. Cyrus was a hidden king. He didn't believe in God. But when God held his hand, God said, whose right hand I have held, he says that I will go ahead of him and make every crooked part. This is an unbeliever. God said, I'll go ahead of him and make every crooked part straight. When God holds your hand, he's responsible for going ahead of you to make every part straight. May God go ahead of you and make every crooked part in your life straight in the mighty name of Jesus. Any casualty that is ahead, may God go and make that crooked part straight in Jesus' name. So when God leads you, he's responsible for going ahead and making sure things are smooth for you. Point number two, when God guides you, he sends his angel to go before you to keep you in the way and to do warfare against opposing forces in the spirit realm. So when God goes ahead of you, he sends his angel to go before you to keep you in the way and to do warfare against opposing forces in the spirit realm. Opposing forces in the spirit realm. Exodus 23 verse 10 says, Behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. God says, I'll send an angel to keep you in the way. So the angel will make sure you don't go to the left. The angel will make sure you don't go to the right and bring you to the place that I have prepared. May God bring you to the place that he has prepared for you in the mighty name of Jesus. May God keep you in his way. May God keep you in his way. May God keep you. And if there's any prayer you would ever pray in your life, God, keep me in the way as you walk. God, keep me in the way. Bring me to the place where you have prepared. Because the place where you have pre God has prepared is a place of rest. It's a place of rest. And may God cause you to enjoy a place of rest. A place of rest. If you are clapping, you can do it better. Keep you in the way. Keep you in the way. Keep you in the way. God, let your angel, God, anytime I go away, let your angel slap me and bring me back on course. God, let your angel bring me back. Some of you have gone out of the way. May God bring you back on course. Some of you have gone very, very far. Some of your spirituality has gone far. Some of you, the person you are dating, you have gone far. You have gone very, very far. The things you are doing, hey! May God bring you back to the way. May God bring you back to the way. Some of you, what you are doing online, the sucker while you're online, may God bring you back to the way. May God bring you back to the way. Why are you, why are you look? Uh, may, God bring you, may God bring you to the place where he has prepared. God bring you to the place where he has prepared. Hey! Hey! Have 
you have gone far. You have gone far. Hey, you can keep somebody's daughter a whole week. You can keep a whole week. Lockdown, lockdown. Even honeymoon, we don't do it like that. I was talking to a young man on Tuesday. He came to the pastor. Please help me. I'm masturbating. I'm I said, if you are masturbating, you must be watching pornography. He said, yes. I said, how many? Can you give me how many times? He says, oh, pastor, sometimes three times a day, the whole week. He said, hey. I said, me, I'm married. I don't even do three times. Hey. I said, so how would you survive in marriage? I said, okay, but God. Some of you have gone very, very far. But may God keep you in the way. May God keep you in the way. Or some of you are not saying amen. May God keep you in the way. Whether you like it or not, the angel of God will keep you in the way. Because we are fasting and praying. And you cannot go out of the way. You cannot go out of the way. Some of you, the videos, the videos on, your, on your phone and your, your laptop. Chai. Hey. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. Eh. But may God keep you in the way. Point number three. God is fully committed to ensuring the success of whatever he directs you to do. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 24. <coughs> he who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. He who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. So God, if God calls you, if God puts you in the way, he's, he's committed to making sure that you do it. How do you recognize God's voice, and then we'll, we'll call it a day. How do you recognize God's voice? One, God's voice is accompanied by peace. God's voice is accompanied by peace. Psalm 85 verse 8. He says, I will hear what God will speak, for he will speak peace to his people and to his saints, but let them not turn back to folly or to foolishness. So when God speaks, it is always accompanied by peace. By peace, by peace, by peace. The peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your heart and your mind. So it's always accompanied by peace. So the person you are, that, that, that guy or that lady, there's, you, you have some inclination in your spirit that this person is not correct. What they are even asking you to do, you know that it is not correct. You don't have the peace of God. You don't have the peace of God. You want to take a decision. You want to have the peace of God. Once you take the decision, you know that you have the peace of God. And I chose to leave my certificate and come into full-time ministry. Many people see me and say, Pastor. There was a lady who saw me at one of the Dickens in church. said, Pastor. 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 My boy, Dimian, sir. Hey! <laughs> Pastor, all this certificate, we are to chain. <laughs> I'm like, Mommy, I, I told her, I said, I did, I, she's another woman. So I did it. I said, I, I told her, I said, that the prayer I have prayed before I made this decision, you don't know. But when you make the decision, you have the peace of God. Amen. Have the peace of God. Have the peace of God. May God bring you to a place where you are making a decision, you have the peace of God in your, in your heart. Amen. Have the peace of God. Because if you have the peace of God and you know that God is directing you, make sure that you are always taken care of. You always make sure you are always taken care of. You have the peace of God. Maybe one day I'll tell you what I had to leave to come into full-time ministries. I mean, many people see me and they, they don't understand the level of sacrifice. Not only the school, it's not only the seven years of school. That, but the kind of job I had that I left and said, okay, I'm putting this. And when I even decided to come into full-time, my, my boss, my medical director called me and said, Dr. Salasi, are you sure of this decision? I said, yes. Then my manager, who is a, who is a clinical psychologist, so she talks sense into people's heads, <laughs> called me and said, it began to break down. Have you thought of the replications? How is your family going to eat? How are you going to eat? Have you thought of the fact that you will not have this, you will not have that? She spoke to me. 45 minutes, I was there. And I, I almost changed my mind. I said, let me go and pray about it. I went to my floor like, God, I have your peace. If I have your peace, let me go with it. Let me go with it. Amen. What am I trying to say? The person you may be with, they may look like they don't have anything today. But if you have the peace of God, follow after it. Amen. So the young man I was telling you about who came and cried. He has dated a lady for 14 years. So the lady finally gets a job in a bank and she's earning a salary of 4,000 Ghana cities. And the guy is now being established. He's coming. He's coming. He's now, he's now being confirmed. They left university two years ago. They are now being, he's also gotten a job. He's now being confirmed. The lady feels, the lady dresses like a banker now. 
and she looks at the guy and feels like this guy is a village guy i need i need a high-tech guy because of that he has left the person um, and the guy says that sometimes he goes to the lady's house and he cooks and comes and serves the lady sometimes you go the lady's clothes are not washed she goes and you wash them and dry them <laughs> what a love what a love <laughs> and he said i said hey so if my wife hears it i'm in trouble hey sometimes you go by the time you go there he's been dating a lady he said pastor before God, the man, I've been dating this lady for 40 years. I've never slept with her. She said she's a virgin. Pastor, I've never said, oh, good, 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 good. She said, because I love her from the bottom of my heart. Then he began to cry. He began to cry. Berman Suba, he began to cry. <laughs> Louis, you don't understand that. Berman Suba means that men don't cry. Men don't cry, but he began to cry. He began to cry. <laughs> but if this lady had waited and said, God, let me hear you, let me... Do I have your peace? Probably God would have told him that this guy, this guy loves you. This guy loves you with everything in his heart. Everything in his, in his, in his heart. To go and wash and wash her bra and wash everything. He's a man who loves. Eh? Wash and cook. They don't be watching movie. Now he the man will get up and go and cook. Come and say, sweetie, watch the movie and enjoy. I'll cook for you. <laughs> the peace of God. The peace of God. Ladies. If there's a lady sitting by, tell the lady, don't do this to any guy. <laughs> the kind of things I hear, hey! My man was crying. I was crying. And I was praying. I had to also pause a little and allow him to cry a little. I was praying and he was crying. <laughs> And I'm praying and I'm saying, God, heal this heart. Heal this broken heart. Mend this heart. <laughs> uh, uh, it's broken. Uh, it's, not, it's, sh- it's shattered. It's a, uh, a million pieces. <laughs> like, God, this prayer I'm praying, uh, this heart, <laughs> will take only you to mend. <laughs> I said, so if the lady comes back, if the lady comes back after all this, would you go back? He said, Pastor, I will go back. I love her. <laughs> Pastor, I will go back. I love her. I will go back. Hey. <laughs> May you have the peace of God. May you have the peace of God. Point number two, when you have the when you, when you follow or you recognize God's voice, there is ease. There is ease. Psalm 25, verse 12 to 13. There is ease. There is ease. There is ease. Psalm 25, verse 12 to 13. Because of time, we'll not go through that. Then point number three. When you recognize the voice of God, you are endued with strength. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours. And he shall save Israel. So when you recognize that this is the voice of God, you are able to go with strength. You are able to go with conviction. Conviction. You have prayed. You know that this is the woman. You go with conviction. It's conviction. You are not afraid. You go with conviction. Some people ask me when I was getting married, was I, did I ever think twice about marrying my wife? Did I ever think that it would... I, and I'm, I wonder why I never... It never even occurred to me that this thing you are going into, you, be, you may be making a mistake. Why? Because I had heard from God. I had heard from God. It didn't mean that it's been easy, but I heard from God. So you are taking a decision. God, I have heard from you. You know, I've heard from people as well. They say this one is a good one. I'm going for it. Go for it. You don't change your mind. You go for it. You are convinced. And point number four, when you recognize the voice of God, there is liberty. Second Corinthians 3, verse 17, that is liberty. You are free. You are free. Some of you are in a relationship and every time you are not free, you, you are, there's no freedom. You, are, you don't feel free. There's something about the relationship. You don't feel free. But when you are in a bright place, there is liberty. You feel free. You feel comfortable. You feel at ease in that relationship. You feel at ease in that relationship. Time will not permit me to talk about the law of endurance and the law of opportunity. We we'll talk about it sometime. But I want to be on our feet tonight. We want to be on our feet tonight. We want to be on our feet tonight. If you are clapping, you can all do it together.
law of endurance and law of opportunity. <clears throat> but we are going to pray three prayers tonight. When you hear from God, God is responsible for going ahead of you to make the crooked path straight. The Bible says in Isaiah 45, verse 1 to 2, it says, That says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have held. We are going to pray tonight. God, hold my hand. It says, To subdue nations before him and lose the armor of kings. To open before him the double door so that the gates will not be shut. We are going to pray, God, open before me in this month double doors. Open before me in 2019, double doors. Father, that no one will shut. And he says, I will go before him and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron. You want to lift up your right hand. You want to say, Father. You want to say it, we believe. You want to say, Father. In the name of Jesus. You want to say, Father. In the name of Jesus. In this month, direct me. In this month, guide me. Open wide, open wide the double doors. Father, let no one shut the gates. Father, in this month, in 2019, go ahead of me. Make every crooked path straight. Make every crooked path straight. Every gate of bronze may it be broken. Every bar of iron. In this year, in this month, may they shatter. May they shatter. You want to talk to God. 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 May God open the doors. The doors of prosperity. The doors of success to you in this month. May God open the doors of marriage to you. May God open the doors of employment to you. May God open doors. The double doors. That no one will shut. You want to talk to God. You want to talk to God. Lega Libranda da 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 da. The doors of business, may God open it to you. The doors of education, the doors of opportunity, may God open it to you. You want to talk to God. You want to talk to God. Leba tasata. Laka libranda sa. Lega libra da liba da 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 ba. You want to talk to God. You want to talk to God. Open the double doors. Yega lebranda saya. Father, in this month, Father, in this year, Father, open the doors. Yeba ya da da da. Father of business. Father, open the doors. Yega lebranda da da da. Father of employment. Lega lebranda da 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 da. Father, may I be guided. Father, may I be led. Father, in this year. Father, may I be led. Father, in this month. Father, in ministry. May I be led. Father, in ministry. May I be guided. Lega lebranda sa. You want to talk to God. You want to talk to God. Leba calibra la da da da. Yega leba da. Hada in my endeavors, Hada open the double gates. Hada in my endeavors, Hada open the double doors. The Yega Libada, Hada may I be favored. The Yega Libranda Dada. Yeba yadada, hada go ahead. Yaba yaga lalaba, hada make every crooked path straight. Yeba yada, hada every crooked path, hada of casualty, hada every crooked path, hada of disappointment, hada every crooked path, hada of rejection, hada make it straight, hada every crooked path, hada of scarcity, every crooked path, hada of loss, hada every crooked path, hada of poverty. Yega le brada. Hada make it straight. Ye ba ya da 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 da. Ye ga le brada sa ya da. Ye ga le brada da da da. We want to talk to God. We want to talk to God. Ye ba ya da 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 da. Ye ba ya da da. Hada shatter the gates of bronze. Hada break in pieces the gates of bronze. Ye ba ya da da. Hada cut the bars of iron. Ye ga le brada sa ya da da. Ye ga le brada sa. Ye ba 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 ba. Yanda da 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 da. Ye ga le brada si ya kaliya. Yanda kalabada. In Jesus' name, the Bible says in Exodus chapter twenty-three, verse twenty. He says, Behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. The Bible says that the angels are they not ministering spirits. So the angels are made to answer.
answer to our prayer. They, are, they minister unto us. We are going to pray tonight. We are, going to, we are going to invoke angelic force on our behalf. We are going to say, Father, keep me in the way. May I not go away from the path that you want me to be in. Father, bring me to the place that you have prepared. And can you imagine if God brings you to the place where he has prepared? He brought Adam to the Garden of Eden. Everything had been made available unto him. Plants were there. Fruits were there. Animals were there. Everything, water was there. Everything Adam needed to survive was in the Garden of Eden. So when God brings you to your, the place where he has prepared, he makes sure that everything has been provided for. You want to lift up your hand with me? You want to say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. You want to say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Tonight... I invoke angelic help. Father, tonight, I send forth angels, Father, to keep me in the way. Father, may your angels bring me to the place that you have prepared. Father, may your angels, may your assigned angels, Father, may your ministering angels, Father, may your archangels, Father, may they bring me to the place that you have prepared. Father, may they guide me. May they direct me. May they order my steps. Father, to the place that you are prepared. You want to talk to God. You want to talk to God. You want to talk to God. Father, send your angels. Father, to keep us in the way. Father, send your angels. Father, to bring us to the place. Father, that you are prepared. Father, only the place that you are prepared. Only the place that you are prepared. Father, that is the place I want to be. Father, that is the place I want to be. Father, the place you are prepared. Father, the job you are prepared. Father, the employment you are prepared. Father, the marriage you are prepared. Father, the business you are prepared. Father, the relationship you are prepared. You want to talk to God. We want to talk to God. Father, the contracts we have prepared. He will lead you in the way and bring you to the place he has prepared. Father, bring me to the place. Father, I let your angels. Father, bring me to the place. Father, that you are prepared. Father, may they direct me. Father, to the place where you are prepared. Father, in ministry. Father, may your angels. Father, bring me to the place where you are prepared. Father, may your angels. Father, bring me to the place. Father, of my abundance. Father, may your angels. Father, bring me to the place. Father, of increase. You want to talk to God. You want to talk to God. And he will send an angel before you. Father, we command angels. Father, we command angels. Father, to go ahead. To keep me in the way. Father, may I never miss the way. Father, may I never miss it. And bring me to the place, Father, where you have prepared. Father, to keep me in the way. Father, tonight, I dispatch my angels. Father, tonight, I dispatch my angels. Father, to keep me in the way. Father, my angels. Father, to bring me. Father, to the place you are prepared. Father, in this month, bring me to the place where you are prepared. Father, in 2019, bring me to the place where you are prepared. In Jesus' name, we are going to pray our last prayer. Bible says in First Thessalonians 5 verse 24, it says, he who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. We are going to pray, Father, whatever you have called me for, Father, may you perform it. You want to lift up your hand. You want to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, in 2019, you have declared, it's my year of growth and increase. Father, your word says, he who calls is faithful. Who also will do it? Father, in this year, Father, in this month, Father, perform your word. Father, may your word 
be manifested in my life. Father, may I be a living testimony. Father, of your declaration. May I be a living testimony of your word. In the name of Jesus, you want to lift up your voice. You want to talk to your God. You want to lift up your voice. Faithful is he who has called. Who also will do it. Who also will do it. You want to talk to God. Who also will do it? Who also will do it? In Jesus' name, can we pray? Father, we thank you tonight. Father, we thank you for your word that has come to us. Father, we pray that we receive divine guidance in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, every step of the way, may we be guided by you. Father, we pray that you go ahead of us and make straight every crooked path in our lives. Father, tonight we dispatch angels and angelic help tonight in Jesus' name. Father, that your angels will keep every member in this house in the way. Father, and your angels will bring them to the place where you have prepared for them. Father, may your people enter into their season of rest. May they enter into their season of fruitfulness. May they enter into their season of abundance. May they enter into their season of growth. We give you praise tonight. We give you glory tonight. In Jesus' name we have prayed. And we say a big amen. Your amen can be louder tonight.